Hey there, let's learn some VBA, Visual Basic Applications, the programming language of Excel. And let's look at a real case this time. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, had an interesting uh, challenge uh, for me. Uh, he has a data set, which is kind of a time series. Uh, in column A, we have uh, the various dates uh, from uh, the 1st of January uh, in 2020, all the way to the 31st of December. 2020 and he has some variables here now we don't have his real data set because uh, that is uh, classified so i have just uh, generate a random data set that means absolutely nothing but the issue we're trying to solve here has to do with the dates um, if you look at these dates we will see that some of them are missing uh, the weekends saturday and sunday for instance are all missing and there are some random dates here and there which are missing uh, mostly due to various reasons such as red letter days, uh, holidays, um, kind of special days. So what we want to do is to uh, add all of the missing dates. How can we do that? Well, there are actually quite a few different approaches we could take. Uh, for instance, we could just generate uh, all the dates from 1st of January to 31st of December in a new um, spreadsheet or worksheet and then just uh, insert the uh, existing values here uh, by using uh, the VLOOKUP or index match combination. We could do that. Most people probably know how to do that. So I'm going to try to do this with uh, VBA instead. Uh, so the second issue, once we have the dates, then we will have missing values. We will have uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday where there are just empty observations. So when we have uh, blank uh, dates, we are going to insert the uh, last known observation. So the Friday observation is going to end up in both the, uh, throughout the whole weekend. Okay, so let's try to do this on the spot. And I think I will, you know, I will make a subroutine using VBA. And what I want to do is basically a loop through each of the dates here one by one. I want to check if there is a difference uh, between uh, the current date and the previous one. Uh, the, the trick about Excel here is that dates are actually just integers in the sky. So if I change this here to, let's see, numeric, you will see it's just uh, you know, 43,831 uh, 40, that corresponds to 1st of January 2020. And then the next day is just incrementing by 1. So what I want to do is to basically see if I'm at this current date, is it equal to the previous one plus 1? If that's the case, well, then we have two consecutive days. However, uh, here, for instance, we will see that it goes from uh, 3 to 6. Why is that? Well, probably because this is a Friday and this is a Monday. So 4 and 5 would be you know, Saturday and Sunday. So let's just turn this back to uh, dates. Uh, so if we observe that there is a gap here, uh, we want to insert um, a new row. So let's just get uh, to it. That's my basic logic here. Uh, first thing I'll do, I'm going to use the macro recorder, which you can find over here in the developer tab. If you don't have the developer tab, well, then you can, well, it, it, you always have it. It's just, just deactivated. So it's not you have to pay anything to get this. Uh, just go to file over here. Then you go to uh, options. And then you're going to click on customize ribbon. And then over in the right uh, panel here, it should be, here we go, developer. If this is unchecked, you add the check mark and click OK. And then this developer tab should appear. So click on the developer tab. And then over here in the left corner, you have record macro. So you're going to start it. Uh, macro recorder will automatically generate the uh, code for anything you're doing with the graphical user interface. So anything I'm doing around the worksheet, uh, macro recorder will generate the code for it. And the reason I'm going to use it because I don't really remember like, how do you how do you insert an empty row, for instance, or change the color of a cell, that type, that sort of things. So we click OK here. Uh, let's just start at, uh, let's just click here on cell A5. I'm going to select the whole row and then right click. And I am going to insert a new row. And that is basically all I'm going to need from the macro recorder. So I'm just going to click stop recording. And to open up the VBA editor, uh, we could uh, click, uh, let's see, uh, click here on Visual Basic, or we could click Alt F11. So Alt button and F11 brings up the VBA editor. 
And down here we have the modules, you can double click on it. And here is module one, which has been uh, automatically generated. If there is no module, if this area gray, uh, before you use the micro recorder, you can insert and then click module if you want uh, a module. Okay, so <clears throat> let's change the name here. Sub means subroutine. I'm gonna give the name such as uh, missing dates. Uh, these are comments, I'm gonna remove them. And uh, here is the code that the um, macro recorder has automatically generated for us. You can remove the indentation. Uh, so first things first. Let's see. So row, so, uh, is, it has unfortunately hard coded the selection of this uh, row. I selected uh, row fiber. And that's no good. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, make this more dynamic or relative. So delete this part and instead we write active cell dot row. So hopefully this will um, select the, uh, the row uh, where the current cell happens to be, the current active cell. So for instance, if I am in here and I uh, run the code with F5, it will select the entire row. So that's good. And next, we want it to insert a row. So this is kind of the core of the script. Uh, however, we don't want to just randomly insert or just put in a new row everywhere. We want it to only do it under a certain condition. So we're gonna have to put this inside an if-then-else uh, logic statement. So if uh, active cell dot value is equal to, so for instance, if I'm in cell um, A3, so if this cell is equal to the previous cell plus one, let's see, so if we use the offset here, minus 1.1, one one, oh, zero, sorry, plus one, then something is gonna have to happen, then something else, can indent that, something else, and then end if. So this is an if then else statement. We have if some kind of condition, if this condition is satisfied, then we will do something, otherwise we do something else. So active cell dot value will just give me you know, the um, input there, whatever it happens to be here. And I check if it's equal to the previous cell, so the cell right above. Uh, that's what the minus one means, just go one row up and zero here, this means that we remain in the same column. So every specified row and every specified column relative to whatever active cell we happen to be in. So if uh, it is equal to the previous one plus one, then I don't want to do anything whatsoever. That means that there is no gap between these two dates. We have a Tuesday and then a Wednesday, for instance. So if that's the case, I want to move one row downwards. So active cell dot offset uh, one point uh, one comma zero dot select. So this means that we're gonna go uh, one cell or one row downwards, but remain in the same column. If that is not the case and there is a difference, uh, then we can paste in the script uh, we uh, generated with the macro recorder. So let's see, uh, yeah, so this will insert a new one, and then I want to uh, populate this cell. It's gonna be empty now, as we did here, see, cell A5 is empty. So, active cell, let's see, I can just uh, copy this, I think. Just copy this part, you don't have to waste time rewriting it. So active cell dot value is going to be equal to the previous plus one. And I think, uh, I think that is it basically. So if we just go back here and we delete uh, this one, we can, we can start, um, start here. Uh, so if I use F5 to run this uh, script, it should basically now just move one down as it did. Uh, if I run it again, it will check is uh, 3rd of January equal to 2nd of January plus one day. It is the case, so it will move one down as you can see. Uh, this time, however, we will see that uh, 6th of January is not equal to uh, 3rd of January plus one day. So if we run the script, it will insert a new empty row and then populate it uh, with a date, which is uh, the one above plus one. 
uh, again, you will now see that okay, there's no there's no um, no gap between the third and fourth of January, so we'll just move down again. And this time there is a gap, so we'll insert one. So you can just keep clicking through this if you want to. However, there's a better way to do this. Uh, we could make a for loop, so hard code how many times it goes down. So for instance, um, well, the original data set was uh, over here. So we'd have to run at least, uh, how many observations do we have here? 251 uh, times, but it needs to do more than that because we're inserting after all. So I don't know how many I'm actually missing. So let's see if we can come up with a smarter way to do this. And I think my approach will be to use a loop here. Uh, not a for loop, because in a for loop you need to know, know exactly how many iterations to do. So we're going to do a while loop instead. So do while uh, status equals true and then loop. Let's see if you can see the whole code there. And just to make it more readable, we're going to indent that. So this segment here will be uh, repeated an uncertain number of times. So we're going to keep uh, iterating and iterating uh, as long as this uh, condition is true, status equals true. What is status equal true? Well, we haven't defined it yet, so it's nothing uh, as of now. So I'm going to make a variable here, status is equal to true. And then here, I'm going to put in an odd if condition that will uh, switch this boolean, this uh, dummy variable from uh, true to false uh, under a certain condition. And what will that condition be? Well, it's going to be when uh, we are running out of dates here. So if this active cell is suddenly empty, there's nothing in it. Well, then we have run out of dates. So if active cell, and I misspelled that, active cell dot value, then, so if is empty, is empty, so you can use a function here called is empty to check if something well, is empty as the name implies. And uh, let's see, it is misspelled again. There we go. So I wrote it in lowercase, and if I did write it correctly, it will automatically change it to you know uh, proper capitalization. So that's a way to check if it is uh, spelled correctly. So for instance, if I did like this first, you see it didn't capitalize. That's why I was able to tell that something is wrong. That and also if you know how to spell, you would also be able to tell, I suppose. So uh, if the active cell is empty, which will be the case when we are running out of dates there, then status is going to be set to false. So I think this should be it. So let's actually just delete this and copy in the original raw data set. And you can click uh, control page down and page up to navigate between different worksheets, so, you know, FYI for your information. So Alt F11 again to open up the script and then we're going to use F5. So hopefully this will work and we have an error. Uh, what is wrong here? If active cell dot value is equal active cell dot offset, uh, yeah, yeah. So we have an issue with the script there, which I didn't think about. Uh, I didn't. I kind of haphazardly just chose a cell here. Yeah, I'm in a one. That's that's the issue here, because we are comparing the active cell, the current cell, with the row straight above. But if you are in row one, there is nothing above it, so you get an error message. Uh, and also, this script kind of assumes that you are in the a column here. So actually, what we need to do here is to put in another condition or an, another um, syntax here. We're going to hard code it to start off by selecting uh, cell A3. Dot select. We need to make sure that we're starting in A3. Uh, because in A3, we're going to compare it with the date above it. If you are in A2, then there is no date above it. It's just the string, which denotes the column name. So I think that should fix the problem. So as, when it's yellow here, you need to click F5 to kind of end the debugging. And we had an other error. What is going on? What is wrong? Range a3.select. Let's see. Okay, something, fix something. <laughs> uh, did it work? Let's see. Uh, yeah. It seems to be working. 
first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh. It seems to be working. Uh, we can uh, test this out uh, quickly just to make sure we actually have all the dates. So I'm going to write here the first of first 2020 plus one. Then I'm going to jump down here and uh, auto complete. Let's check if this is equal to uh, this date, then zero, otherwise one. So if the states are matching, we get zero. If not matching, we get a one here. So the sum of this whole column should then be equal to zero. And it uh, is, which means that we have successfully generating all the missing dates. Now, the next issue to deal with here is uh, that we now suddenly have uh, blank observations here. How do we fix that? Well, we could make another uh, VBA function that is looping through and just adds in the uh, previous code. And you can uh, basically just reuse uh, a lot of this script there. We, can, we already kind of did it uh, with uh, ad uh, adding in this um, missing uh, dates. But uh, I think we can, it's going to be too repetitive, so I think we can use another approach here. So what I'm going to do is to select this uh, entire range of data. Uh, one way to do that, if you are in uh, cell A2, for instance, and click Control A, it will select the whole uh, range of uh, continuous data. Uh, then I'm going to click F5 to bring up this uh, little pop-up window. I'm going to click on Special. I'm going to select uh, Blanks. Hit OK. So all these uh, empty uh, cells have now been selected. And uh, I'm going to click uh, F2. And I'm going to write in equal signs. And we are in cell B5. Uh, so I'm going to write in B4 like this. So uh, cell B5 is just referencing the cell immediately above it, um, but, make, but uh, keep in consideration that this is uh, not hard-coded, it's relative. So since I've selected all the cells now, I can just click Control enter and it will add all of the missing variables. Uh, so as you can see here, here we have the Friday and here we get the Monday. So Saturday and Sunday is just a repeat of the Friday observation. Uh, so that's the way to go. Let's just summarize there. We had a list of uh, dates there. There were some missing dates, weekends, for instance, and uh, holidays. So we made our VBA script there. Here is the code. So we started off by writing sub. Sub means subroutine, then a valid name. Then we hard coded it to select uh, the uh, cell A3. We made a variable, which is a boolean here, uh, which is that equal to true. Then we had a loop here, uh, a do while loop. Uh, it means that we'll, uh, we don't know how many iterations it will have ahead of time. It will keep uh, continuing until this condition is no longer true. So what is it repeating? Well, it's repeating this part. Uh, first there, we have an if then else statement and then another if then else statement. In the first uh, logic statement here, we are basically checking if there's any gaps between the current date and the previous date. If there uh, is no uh, gap, then we just move one row down to the next date. If there is a gap error, we select the whole row, we insert a new row, and we populate this now empty uh, cell with uh, the previous date plus one day. And uh, to get rid of these uh, missing values, we could make a VBA function, which would be or not function, but subroutine, which is pretty similar uh, to the one we made here. But instead, we just used a little trick uh, from, uh, from the worksheet. Uh, I made another video about that, how to get uh, rid of um, um, missing observations. Uh, we're basically using the same approach. So, hope you <laughs> learned something. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys around.